Did you know that many of Aesop's fables were originally developed by the Sumerians and told by the ancient Egyptians much earlier than when the Greeks compiled them? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about Aesop's fables. Although now considered children's tales, today we're going to have a look at the long history, meaning and importance of Aesop's fables. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organisation and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week, so make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. Generally speaking, a fable is a short story that usually includes animals that act like people as the main characters, and conveys a moral or a lesson to be learnt. Aesop's fables, which come to a total of 725, although modern editions often only include between 2 and 300, are no different. Initially, these short stories were a part of the long oral tradition of ancient Greece, but were committed to writing in the 6th century BCE, perhaps by a former slave named Aesop, who is thought to have been born in circa 620 BCE. Prior to that though, many of the fables now attributed to Aesop were developed in Mesopotamia by the Sumerians. Fables themselves have a long history prior to archaic and classical Greece, not only in Mesopotamia, but also in Egypt, especially during the Middle Kingdom. We know of Aesop from a few different ancient sources, although all come from after his supposed time. And we don't actually have any evidence for Aesop himself writing down any of his fables. Herodotus was writing in the 5th century BCE and tells us that Aesop was a slave on Samos and was known as a storyteller or story maker. It is during the 5th century BCE that some specific tales were connected to Aesop by writers like Aristophanes and Aristotle. We know that in the late 4th century, Demetrius of Phalerum, who worked in the Library of Alexandria, compiled Aesop's fables for the first time, although this text no longer survives, and the earliest version that does survive dates to the 1st and 2nd centuries CE. The claim for Aesop as the author of all 725 fables attested to him is much the same as that of Homer being the one man who personally penned both the Iliad and the Odyssey. Some scholars, in fact, doubt Aesop ever existed at all, and this is a question we will probably never find an answer for. Each of Aesop's fables, all of which are short and to the point, contain a central moral, whether that be desirable behaviour or undesirable. They teach the reader or listener about rights and wrongs, and they highlight poor choices. But they're done so in a way that doesn't feel like you're being chastised or taught a lesson, for most of the fables have an animal or animals with human characteristics that are dealing with human concerns. The fables transmitted important life lessons, as well as becoming a popular form of children's entertainment, with many of the main characters behaving in childlike ways. These fables, surviving over 2,500 years, had more of a purpose than simply entertainment and the teaching of good morals and what not to do in many situations. They also had a political use. Fables could be used as a way to criticise the government indirectly, which meant the author had no fear of punishment, especially considering these fables emerged in Greece during a period of authoritarian rule, which made free speech quite perilous at times. The fables reminded an audience that the weak could be clever, and being clever is a type of power. The fables were also a powerful tool in speeches, and could be used as a means to persuade, with Aristotle arguing in his rhetoric that if you don't have any evidence to support your point, a fable could be just as helpful. So now that we know the history of the fables of Aesop and their purposes in ancient Greek society, let's have a look at some of the most famous of Aesop's fables. The Fox and the Grapes. 
A hungry fox saw some fine bunches of grapes hanging from a vine that was trained along a high trellis, and did his best to reach them by jumping as high as he could into the air. But it was all in vain, for they were just out of reach, so he gave up trying and walked away with an air of dignity and unconcern, remarking, I thought those grapes were ripe, but I see now they are quite sour. It is easy to despise what you cannot get. The Crow and the Pitcher a thirsty crow found a pitcher with some water in it, but so little was there that, try as she might, she could not reach it with her beak, and it seemed as though she would die of thirst within sight of the remedy. At last, she hit upon a clever plan. She began dropping pebbles into the pitcher, and with each pebble the water rose a little higher, until at last it reached the brim, and the knowing bird was enabled to quench her thirst. Necessity is the mother of invention. The Wolf in Sheep's Clothing A wolf resolved to disguise himself in order that he might prey upon a flock of sheep without fear of detection. So he clothed himself in a sheepskin and slipped among the sheep when they were out at pasture. He completely deceived the shepherd, and when the flock was penned for the night, he was shut in with the rest. But that very night as it happened, the shepherd, requiring a supply of mutton for the table, laid hands on the wolf in mistake for a sheep and killed him with his knife on the spot. Appearances are deceptive. The Tortoise and the Hare A hare was one day making fun of a tortoise for being so slow upon his feet. Wait a bit, said the tortoise. I'll run a race with you and I'll wager that I win. Oh well, replied the hare, who was much amused at the idea, let's try and see. And it was soon agreed that the fox should set a course for them and be the judge. When the time came, both started off together, but the hare was soon so far ahead that he thought he might as well have a rest. So down he lay and fell fast asleep. Meanwhile, the tortoise kept plodding on, and in time reached the goal. At last, the hare woke up with a start and dashed on at his fastest but only to find that the tortoise had already won the race. Slow and steady wins the race. Do you know of any other Aesop fables with a moral or a saying that is still common today? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my sweater, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon with another video.